What's going on everyone, it's Justin here and welcome to another Cool Tech episode where we take a look at some of the most unique products that have arrived in the office over the last few months. They cover many categories including general smartphones as well as audio products, home tech, and also some gaming accessories. And in this video in particular, we have a lot to go over. One of the most exciting ones is the iPhone 14 Pro and we just got back from the Apple Keynote in Cupertino. And some of the other products that we've also checked out recently include DJI's mini drone that is able to record vertical aerial video that we brought on our trips alongside the Insta360 X3, which is our new 360 degree camera. So as always, you guys know the drill. If you would like to win an item from this video, just go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, and leave a comment down below as to what your favorite item is. I'll be picking a winner in the comment section in one month. So make sure you leave your Instagram username as well so I can contact you directly. So another piece of cool tech that arrived in the office is the iPhone 14 Pro. As Apple just had their biggest event of the year in Cupertino, which we were lucky enough to attend and get a first hands-on of this phone, but also be able to take it to Iceland and push it to its limits when it comes to some of the camera features, which is probably some of the areas where we saw the biggest improvement, especially in the Pro model. The first thing to talk about when it comes to tech is the dynamic island. I feel like it's a very innovative way of hardware and software blend that Apple has implemented, and the dynamic island really does add a good level of functionality to something that people may not always enjoy looking at. The main camera is 48 megapixels and it uses a quad pixel technology to take photos in 12 megapixels, giving you better low light performance and sharpness, but it also allows you to take photos at the full 48 megapixels when it comes to the Pro Raw. Whereas someone who likes to take photos on the iPhone and edit them in post, that is great to have, but it also has the 2X option where it uses just 12 megapixels of that 48 megapixel sensor to give you a full resolution 2x focal point, giving you a total of four focal points on the iPhone camera. The main camera is really what we're here for and with the 65% larger sensor, that is definitely going to help and being able to use the action mode which has great stabilization at 2.8K as well as the cinematic mode in 4K is why I've had a great time with this phone and when, when people ask like what I take my stories on on Instagram, it is all recorded from the flagship iPhone and so the video features specifically and that higher resolution is what I'm most excited about. So this next product right here is the brand new Sonos Ray, and it's the entry level soundbar in Sonos' lineup. And I feel like lately they've been offering many more products that kind of round out that entire ecosystem and giving you options depending on what you need. The Sonos soundbar lineup now consists of the Ray, which is the entry level, as well as the Beam 2, which comes in at that mid price point. And of course, the flagship Sonos Art comes in closer to $1,000, and that is my favorite soundbar overall. But not everyone needs a full size soundbar and in this case, you're able to get one that has all the best features of the Sonos ecosystem, including TruePlay and also the Sonos app and the ability to change the EQ and everything at a relatively compact size that still has a lot of the same design characteristics and sound qualities of the rest of the lineup. You can see that this is one that is really good for a small apartment, the bedroom, or a dorm room because it is so compact. It comes in a color of white and black, and I feel like the white one is the one that I'm going with because it doesn't show dust at all. But in terms of the buttons on the top, you have the similar controls that you find with the touch capacitive aspect. And when it comes to input, you have ethernet as well as the optical and you don't have HDMI eARC in this model specifically, which I feel like is okay for the most part. The TruePlay feature is one that I really like to use because you can actually tune the speaker to adjust its characteristics depending on the size and feedback on the room. And if you have other Sonos speakers as well, you can tie it into the same system and you can walk around throughout that perimeter and be able to customize it in a way where you actually do notice a pretty good level of difference. And so it doubles as a TV soundbar as well as a home speaker. And what's also nice is that there's a feature where if you're using this at night, it is able to bring out the quiet sounds while also so tapering down the very loud sounds so you don't disturb anyone in like the next room, for example, and that is especially important if you have roommates or maybe you're in a dorm. But of course, you are also factoring in the ecosystem of the entire Sonos lineup, so if you're looking for a good entry-level option, I think this is the perfect product for that. So one thing about the tech industry is that hardware is often very familiar and there's not many huge changes in the primary categories of tech. So whenever there's a product that has a new hardware or form factor, I'm really excited to check it out and this is the Steam Deck. 
Honestly, I haven't really had much time to game in the past few years, and I've never really been a huge gamer at all, but I used to have a PSP, and so when there's a product that comes out that allows you to game in a portable form, I'm pretty intrigued to check it out. So this is a Steam Deck, and it was really hard to find, so I actually paid resale price for it. But first impressions is that it provides a pretty full experience despite the portable form factor. It is relatively large, but still easy to carry around, and I just love the ergonomics of it. You see the buttons on the back here, there's also your triggers on the top, your joysticks on the front, as well as a touchpad on each side for your thumbs, and the screen itself is a 7 inch 1200 by 800 resolution IPS display, which I think looks pretty good. The brightness is decent, and it may not be like the sharpest display on the market, but given the size and the use case, I've got to say I'm pretty happy with it. When you go to like the Steam menu, it has some of the recommended games that have been optimized for this form factor, and you just go ahead and download it, and based on the specs that are inside, it is a custom AMD APU, and depending on the model that you get, you can also get it with faster storage, and the one that I have right here is 256 gigs of the faster NVMe storage paired with 16 gigs of RAM. Even though I will say the software has a few glitches here and there, from a hardware standpoint, I think they've done a pretty good job. The haptics and everything are very responsive, the speakers sound good, there's also a six axis gyroscope, and the battery life really depends on the game that you're playing, but you can expect anywhere from two to eight hours. The only complaint that I have about the hardware is that it is like a very basic plastic that doesn't really feel premium at all. Even though I don't really have a problem with plastic, I don't know, it's just like maybe you could have had like a soft touch finish or just something a bit more durable, but otherwise the hardware perspective I feel like is one that they've nailed. It'll be interesting to see what other games are optimized for the Steam Deck in the future, but if you're someone who travels a lot and likes to play like PC games on the go, then the Steam Deck is definitely one that I feel like is worth checking out. I've done a ton of flying this year and have a few very long flights coming up, so I'll definitely be bringing this with me on the go. So as you've probably seen, I've been covering a lot of home tech products on the channel over the past few years, whether it's for the kitchen, living room and entertainment systems, and even outdoor spaces. But today, I have a product that is for pet owners out there. So whether you have a dog or a cat, if you have a busy life where you're not always at home, maybe you're out for dinner, or you're at school or work, being able to feed your pets on a scheduled basis while being able to monitor them from your smartphone app is a very important accessory. And this one here is the Pet Libro Granary monitoring version, which has a camera built in that gives you a 1080p resolution and a 145 degree field of view, which allows you to monitor your pet while you're not home. And using the Pet Libro app are also able to set specific schedules for their feeding time. There is also a two-way voice interaction system, so you can actually talk to your pet remotely from your smartphone as well. Well. When it comes to the camera in low light, there's also an infrared night vision clear sight built in. It also has a quadruple seal system that ensures all the food that you store in the Pet Libro stays fresh. And they also include a food grade stainless steel bowl. It also has an infrared safety detection system that stores food safe from pesky paws and it detects something blocking the food outlet and stops the food from dispensing right away. There is also a backup battery built in, so if you have a power outage, it actually has some power stored to ensure you can still connect with your pet and that they still get fed. This Pet Libro also supports both 2.4 and 5 GHz Wi-Fi networks to ensure a strong and reliable connection to your home. It will notify you through the app whenever the food tank is empty, food gets jammed, or the battery is low, and also has a micro SD card slot built in for recording. They also have a few different models available, including a three lure version, a two pet version that is five liters in capacity, as well as the monitoring version, which we featured in this video. So if you're looking for a great product to monitor your pet while you're away, while ensuring that they get fed at the right schedule and has all the features considered in one system, I'm gonna leave a link down below to the so because this is a Cooltech series, I always like to talk about some of the electric cars that we've also checked out recently. I feel like electric cars are really going to be the future of tech, and it's a category in particular that I'm most excited by. Even though I don't plan on getting an electric car for at least the next couple of years, I just love to see the innovation in design and technology in that space, and we recently had an incredibly exclusive opportunity to test drive the Mercedes Vision EQXX concept project out in Immendingen, Germany. Mercedes 
flew us out and let us go ahead and test out that vehicle. And it is the one that set the world record of a single charge doing over 1200 kilometers in range, exceeding their goal of a thousand kilometers in range. What was really impressive about it is that it was mainly achieved through aerodynamics. Having to build a car like that is impressive on its own, but, it, but the solution wasn't just to throw the biggest battery because that adds weight to the car, making it less efficient. The drag coefficient of that car is just 0.17 compared to 0.2 on their EQS, which is already a very aerodynamic car based on its design, but it also features a 95% battery to powertrain efficiency and 117 roof solar cells that are able to at least assist in trying to maximize that range. Beyond that, it also features a 47 7.5 inch seamless OLED display on the inside, which has a video game style interface. And because it is an OLED panel, when some of the pixels and areas aren't being used, it actually turns off those pixels to conserve just a bit more power. With a project like this, it seems like they've tested every single thing possible because it's just not a car that they plan to sell. So even if something was able to add just a little bit of range to be able to exceed that goal, they did it in this case. From a driving perspective, it was great. It was a car that was fast, but definitely not like the fastest on their lineup of electric cars because that is not its intention. But the way that it looks on the outside just looks super futuristic and it draws a lot of inspiration from Formula E and Formula One aerodynamics where efficiency is key. So that was definitely one of the coolest experience and probably the most impressive piece of tech that I'm going to check out this year. But if you guys wanna check out the full video on the channel, we did do a film for that. So another product that we're checking out here is the Unitree Pump. And if you're someone who doesn't really like to maybe go to the gym all the time, or you wanna be able to work out from home, but don't wanna have all the equipment everywhere, this is a very revolutionary tool that combines multi-purpose use cases in a single product right here. It is one that is portable, it looks very simple, and if you wanted to bring this on the road, for example, you definitely could. And the best part about it is that it also has a really good app that goes with it, and it also works up to 90 percent of the body's muscle groups within just this one tool and also allows you to combine multiple of them together to be able to get the exercise and workout that you need. You can anchor it to a door, a chair, the track, and also setting up as a rowing machine. And the built-in motor can smartly control the resistance and support concentric and eccentric training and it replaces a resistance band, a dumbbell, a leg curl machine, and many more. When it comes to the hardware standpoint, the motor is improved by the team's flagship product and quadrupled the robot's joint motor. And it also has an FOC controlled system that adjusts its torque in real time for stable resistance output. There's also a generation mode within the app. And in this mode, you can recharge your pump by 1% by pulling the rope just 10 times at a 44 pound resistance, which is the maximum. When the pump is fully charged, you can also perform approximately a thousand workouts with a resistance of 22 pounds. The best part about this though is that it all comes in a frame that is durable and weighs just 700 grams, which is about the same as a large water bottle. And you can bring it with you anywhere, put it in your backpack, and it also comes in many fun colors. The setup process itself is very simple and they include a whole bunch of accessories to allow you to take full advantage of it. And you can also purchase additional accessories to set up a more permanent setup in your home, for example, or you can just utilize most of its features in an on the go form factor like this. Inside the box, they give you a door anchor fixing, an annular fixing belt, a pull rope handle, an ankle fixing accessory, as well as an extension cable, safety buckle, power cable, and a storage pouch. Some of the add-on accessories that you can also purchase include an exercise bar, suction cups, the rowing accessory, and also the power rack that you can attach to the wall and build a more permanent home setup while still being able to detach the main unit and take it with you everywhere. So taking a look at some of the exercises, the Fitness Pump app is the central hub of this entire system. You can change the weight through the app. You can connect up to eight unitary pumps in coordination, giving you a total weight of 352 pounds. But it also lets you record your workouts in real time and track them within the app as well. The app itself provides over 100 tutorials which are constantly updated and it's a very intuitive and well-constructed app that has a ton of features but at the same time at its core it's pretty simple just like the product itself. You can customize resistance from 11 to 44 pounds with the ratio adjust from 0 to 50 percent. From the eccentric side you can also have two customizable features to adjust in this mode from the 11 to 44 pounds and also the ratio from 0 to 50 percent but in two different modes including the 
constant and the chain mode. The constant mode gives you the same resistance when pulling out of the rope and pump rolling back the rope, whereas the chain mode allows you to schedule resistance and the pump will adjust resistance automatically. These are features that are gonna be coming soon. So if you're looking for a revolutionary product to be able to work out at home and on the go in a relatively portable form, this is the perfect one for you. And I feel like with the 44 pounds of weight, for the most part, it's able to provide you a pretty good workout. And the fact that it is versatile is the reason why this product is so effective. The app itself is also intuitive, allows you to easily control the weight and also the different workouts. And I also like the fact that all of the tutorials are built into the app so you can find creative ways to make it work best for you. And especially with the price of dumbbells, for what this is able to provide and being a multi-purpose tool, I feel like it's a pretty good deal. If you guys want to go ahead and check this out for yourself, there's a super early bird pricing if you want to buy it right now for $159, and I'm going to drop a link down below. So another product that we also checked out this month is the Insta360 X3, and we had our chance to get our hands on it a little bit early and bring it to Paris as well as to Apple Park and Cupertino, and it was just fun to be able to test out this camera for the first time because I haven't actually used one before. And the fact that it has a screen on the front is kind of what encouraged us to go ahead and try it out because I personally don't really like dealing with apps and having to connect stuff to the smartphone when using it because I simply have too many things connected to my phone and I also use my phone all the time because I just don't like to have to connect via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and tinker with the app. So the fact that this has a 2.3 inch display now in its newest generation just makes it easy to control all of the settings and see what you're recording at the same time wherever you are. So just go ahead and turn it on and it can record 360 video at 5.7K resolution and allow you to reframe it within the app itself or on the computer. And there's also a MIMO that automatically exports in a 16 to nine or a nine to 16 ratio to get you a great clip for a vlog without any editing required. You can also use features such as the bullet time-lapse as well as the 8K time-lapse, taking photos at up to 72 megapixels in resolution or using it as an action cam. So even though when it comes to the video quality itself, it may not compare to some of the best cameras that we bring on the trip. In some cases, having that versatility is better than having nothing because there are certain scenarios where bringing our main cameras is just not exactly practical and nothing is able to capture everything around us better than a camera like this. So yeah, this is the Insta360 X3 and if you plan to use even just one or two of the features primarily, then you can definitely get some good value out of a product. So the next product right here is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. And honestly, I've taken a break from drones for many years because I've pretty much crashed every single one that I've had. And with all these other mediums that we have to manage, it just really isn't my priority most of the time. But of course, with all of the travel, it's important to be able to capture aerial footage as well because it can really add to the video. And so when DJI announced the Mini 3 Pro, I figured it was the perfect drone because it is able to take video and photos in a portrait format as well, which is good for reels and Instagram. In terms of the image quality, it comes in at a 48 megapixel resolution with a 1 and 1.3 inch CMOS sensor and it's able to record up to 4K 60 at 8-bit 420 at 150 megabits per second. Even though their large model is able to record at a higher resolution and at 10-bit 422 which is important when it comes to grading the footage, I still feel like for the form factor and coming in under 250 grams that allows you to fly it in more places than the larger size models without a license or registration just makes it a much more versatile option that we find we use a lot more than the larger drone that we still do bring on some trips. The other reason why I like it beyond its size and the fact that it can record portrait video is that you can also buy it with a display. It isn't actually too expensive of an upgrade compared to having to buy a remote with a display on its own for the DJI Mavic 3. So I went ahead and picked it up. I don't like to have to connect my phone to the remote and all that every time. So this all-in-one system paired up with a form factor and versatility and pretty good image quality is the reason why this drone is the one that we've brought on every trip this year. So one area of tech that I always enjoy checking out is whenever a luxury design or fashion brand creates a product that implements cutting edge technology. And one category that has seen a lot of that is in smartwatches. An example that you might've seen on the channel a few years ago is when we did a video of the Louis Vuitton Tambor Horizon smartwatch. That was one that implemented design, the leather strap with a screen that was relatively large as well as Louis Vuitton's own interface and watch faces. And it was cool to check out, but definitely not something that I would wear on an every day basis. I do like to have a few watches and have a few that I plan to pick up in the near future. 
But in front of me, I have a watch that I've been pretty interested for quite a while now, and that is the Tag Heuer Connected Watch. It's one that is a little bit more accessible in the price point relative to some of the other luxury and designer smartwatches out there, but it still does cost a couple thousand dollars coming from a brand that is known for making watches and has been for quite some time. And so taking a look at the watch itself, I have the 42 millimeter model in front of me, and I think it looks really nice. It is super simple. It has like the numbered dials. And I think what they've done a really good job with is blending the digital and analog elements. But in this case, you've got an AMOLED display that has a 416 by 416 resolution. And the watch faces that you can pick merge very well with the actual surrounding elements. And it's a nicely smoothed off piece of glass that is sapphire crystal. So it's scratch resistant. It's what you find on the high-end watches. When it comes to the interface, it was really fun to be able to set the actual watch face. So the ones that Tag here has customized here, you have quite a few different selections and colors. And you can also pick the different widgets that you have on certain and watch faces to have useful utilities to display. On top of that, there's a whole range of features included in watchOS, including apps that you can install, fitness sessions and workouts that you can set up and you can control everything from the app, whether you're on iOS or Android. I know you guys have commented about the watches that I've worn in my videos over the past couple of years because I've sort of started a small collection. I wouldn't say it's like a big collection by any means, but I'm starting to gain a bit of an interest in that category and they're also really good investments. And recently I had the chance to be on the Chrono24 YouTube channel talking about my favorite watches and what I plan to pick up next. So huge thanks to them for sending me this tag here connected watch as a gift and for those who don't know chrono 24 is the best place to be able to see the watch trends in terms of prices and the market itself and you can also buy from their marketplace it's literally the go-to place for any watch lover out there and with over 9 million monthly visitors and 500,000 watches listed by trusted dealers and private sellers around the world they've got a free trusted checkout service and they offer a secure way to shop new pre-owned and vintage watches globally from brands like Rolex, Omega, Patek Philippe, and more. This is where they picked up this watch and with the watch market being so crazy and also a lot of fun to follow the trends of how the prices have gone even since we filmed that episode and why it's a good time to buy recently, go ahead and download the app for yourself and I'm also gonna have a link to their website down below. So the next product that I have right here is the Gosney Rockbox and it allows you to make Neapolitan style pizza in just 60 seconds. It is technically portable and it allows you to reach a temperature of 950 Fahrenheit to give you an authentic wood fire pizza or you could also utilize the gas method because it does have a dual fuel option. It's available in dark olive or in gray and I feel like it's a product that is especially popular in the summer and although summer is kind of ending it's been a really fun product to use. The unit itself is built and designed very nicely. You just go ahead and set up the tripod style legs. You can put it on your deck, on a table, or bring it with you. And there's also a whole bunch of accessories that you can also purchase for the rock box. You can then go ahead and use your pizza of choice, whether it's a frozen pizza from the grocery store that's already ready to go, or you can also make it from scratch, which is a lot more fun and you get that full experience. But this product is made for any pizza lovers out there because it makes the whole process very simple. You just go ahead and connect it. It has a built-in thermometer to let you know when it's ready for cooking and just place your pizza inside and you get that authentic finished result. For the price, it is definitely a product that you want to get a few uses out of at least, but you can see everyone's having a ton of fun with it and the pizza that comes out of this is incredible in under 60 seconds. But thank you guys so much for watching this month's Cool Tech episode. There is a ton of new products and with the fall season coming around, we were just getting started because there are so many releases at this time of year leading into CES where there's gonna be so many more releases. So I hope you guys are excited for that content and let me know in the comment section as always what videos you would like to see or if you'd like to see me do a specific review of some of the products featured in this episode. But until next time, I'll see you in the next video.